everybody. Welcome to baby, I keep, I keep calling it baby bumps and beer bellies and I was just kept switching it around. So kind of, yeah, I just keep messing it up. So we're gonna start the presentation. Is everybody good? Awesome. and family chiropractor and you're probably wondering like why are we even doing this so we'll share this knowledge with you it's gonna be a fun event um, these that is not a beer belly that is a baby bump <laughs> so that is my first daughter who is now 11 um, and her name is Brick and my second daughter is turning eight and her name is Brighton so I have two amazing little girls so I like all the pink out there it makes me happy <laughs> girls are so much fun so this is a little bit about me and our family. So we actually practice, um, we're both pediatric chiropractors and we're in Royal Oak right down the street at 13 and a half mile in Rochester Road. And so we're really close. And we love this place and this space. So I hope everybody is enjoying the beer and the great food too. Awesome, okay. So obviously our goal is to have a little bit of fun tonight because how often you get to go out on a Thursday night, right? Um, learn something new, take something home with you that you didn't know before you walked through the door and last but not least, empower you to have the birth that you want. So that's what we're gonna work on tonight. What we're gonna do before we get started with everything though is I just want you to look in your folders as we're gonna do a, play a little game first. Um, there should be two in each folder, so you and your whoever came with you. <laughs> there are pens on the tables. If you need more, just raise your hand and Melissa will bring you one. There's also a registration form in here that we encourage you to fill out. We have some drawings at the end, and if we don't have your registration form, we can't draw your name. So fill those out while we're talking. The front of it has just some basic information. <laughs> and then the back of it just goes through some different things about your um, pregnancy. So these are for the moms, clearly. Sorry, let me be very specific. <laughs> There's also some more information in here. Um, on the other side, we have a $10 gift card. Um, there's some information about starting solids. And, uh, can't take Renee. <laughs> and Renee's in the back offering um, some uh, birth photos or some pregnancy photos. So just take a look through this. There's a lot of good information in it and there's gonna be some stuff we'll talk about a little bit later, but we just wanted you to have it. So the next thing we're gonna do is play this game. So, so everybody get your pen out. And so the the key is, is it a baby bump, a baby bump or a beer belly? Okay? Alright, so here comes the first one. So circle, circle if it's a baby or a beer. Everybody done? That would be a beer belly. <laughs> okay, next. Is A a baby bump or a beer belly? And same with B. Okay, three, two, one. So there's a little discrepancy with this picture. 
We're not quite sure about B. Yeah. We actually think it's a girl on B. I'm pretty sure it's a baby bump. So don't believe the slide. It's a liar because everyone gets that one. So we give you that one for free. All right. Okay. Make your answers. Three, two, one. Next up. going to stand with his hand on his hip, but I don't know. But the other picture. Okay, so I want everybody to add everything up. What? We just, we'll give you that one. That is a freebie. Free square. Yeah, two B is a free square, because I'm pretty sure it was a girl. Yeah. Okay, everybody add it up. Okay, did anybody get all 14 right? Awesome, awesome. All 14? Okay, so we have, is it only one guy with 14? You it? All right. Awesome, congratulations. Okay, so three, Women had the, it right, right? So we're going to have to draw your. Most of you back there. Okay. You guys are so good. What a great couple. <laughs> and then who else had four, 14? Anybody else? Just one? Okay. You win then. So what we're giving is. A fabulous book. We did give you a truck book because, you know, trucks. But also these are wonderful ice packs. They're felted on the back, so our kids love them. So these are our kids' ice packs. So congratulations, everybody. Right. Now, to the, now to the reason that we're here, right? We had our fun now. So we're going to talk just about a few different kinds of birth providers. Um, this is not to insult or place blame on anyone, but it's just to have a conversation about what's out there and uh, what's available for your birth and how it can look however you want it to really. So the biggest things that we encourage are finding people who are supporting you. 
um, have a really good relationships with you. They don't just run in and out of the room. Um, it's a really, birthing is a really important thing, right? It's, it's bringing a new life into the world, and that's, uh, we want that to be supported for the moms and for the dads or significant others or whoever's with you in that, in that place. So these are the four things we're looking for. So first thing I'm going to talk about OBGYN or family physician. Both of these are doctors, MDs, or DOs. They can be either. Um, so the biggest things with them, a lot of times they look at birth as if it is a condition, right? Um, so they're not necessarily supporting you in some of the, maybe the more natural things that you want to be doing, um, but that's okay. <laughs> um, they're also more trained in intervention. So what we see very frequently is that uh, OBGYNs and family practice doctors are using more interventions. So if that's something you're not looking for, obviously maybe looking elsewhere would be a good thing. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about midwives. Midwives. Uh, most of the midwives are certified nurse midwives nowadays. Um, a lot of them will even deliver in hospitals. So you can do a home delivery, you can do a hospital delivery, you can do a birthing center delivery. So that's another area that you can go to. Obviously, if you're looking for something that supports more of a natural, um, your body is really powerful, you can do things on your own. Um, they give you a little more freedom in your birthing plan. Um, so just another a way to go. This slide just talks about the differences. So kind of the few things I've already said. Um, in a medical model, they focus more on the doctors doing the delivering of the baby. In a midwifery model, the mother's doing the delivery, right? They're doing all the work. They're just, the doctor's there to catch or the midwife is there to catch. Um, so these are just some really interesting ways to look at different ways that you can find a birth provider that supports you in what you're doing. So like I said, we're not placing blame on one or the other, not telling you to do one or the other, but just knowing where their support is coming from. So, how many of you have a doula? How many know what a doula is? <laughs> All right, good, good. <laughs> so a doula is a trained professional, like it says up here. Um, they come in and they support you during your birth. So sometimes uh, maybe husbands or significant others or are really uncomfortable in that situation, they're not really sure what to do, the doula can come in and really give you some extra support. Um, and it's not really too late for any of you to get a doula if it's something you would be interested in. Um, the other part of a doula is a postpartum doula, which you would get for after you actually have the baby. Um, it's a really nice way if you don't have family that's close or uh, a good support system to have somebody come in after the baby's born. A lot of times you can have them stay at your house for a couple nights. Um, they're able to give you some extra rest, help you with things around the house sometimes, teach you different ways to soothe. So if it's your first baby, sometimes it's nice to have somebody in the house that can give you a little bit of extra help uh, to make the things go easier because moms just went through a really big thing and sometimes they don't have that support if their family or friends aren't around for that, okay? So I love doulas, they're great. Last thing, a lactation consultant. So if you're planning on breastfeeding, sometimes it's a little harder than people think it's gonna be. So this is just another person who's gonna offer you some support in that way. Uh, they're gonna come in and be able to either, in the hospital, a lot of hospitals have a lactation consultant. Um, you can have people come, um, the pediatrician sometimes will have them. And additionally, you can have somebody come into your home and work with you. So teaching you better ways to hold the baby so that you're not having issues like mastitis. You know, helping you deal with that if you do end up having mastitis or other things that can go wrong with breastfeeding um, and just really supporting you in that process because it can be really really frustrating um, I don't have any kids of my own but I have been through those journeys with quite a few of my friends so uh, just having somebody to talk to and give you some really great feedback is awesome so they're another person who's really helpful all right so some classes that can be helpful I don't know if you have Heard of these so hypnobirthing I'm gonna hand this one over to Dr. Saylor because she actually used it during her pregnancy so so who's heard about her hypnobirthing anybody so hypnobirthing I know we have where is she right there oh <laughs> so Mandy is a she's a hypnobirthing consultant too right yeah so I use hypnobirthing in my in my pregnancy and I do have to say like it's an amazing way to keep relaxed it's an amazing way to just get your body supported before pregnancy, before the delivery. My husband hated it because I had it on like a repeat when I would go to bed. And he was like, if I have to listen to that woman one more time, I'm going to shoot 
myself in the brain. So I actually had to get it on an MP3 player, this is dating me, but I had to get it in my headphones and it was amazing. So just to relax you, so you don't have to do the class, but I would highly, highly suggest you do a class because it's just a way of empowering you and relaxing you because the stress of pregnancy and the stress of delivery really start getting you kind of amped up and hypnobirthing is a really soothing way to do it. So I highly encourage you to look into hypnobirthing. The other one that I put on here is the Bradley method. Um, Bradley is another, it's like a 12 week course where it goes through a lot of different things. Um, the biggest thing about Bradley is it's a really good way for the father if the, or, or significant other or birth partner, whoever's gonna be there to help you out. It's a really great way for them to feel empowered to help you, to support you um, and to be there and uh, create the environment that's, that's supportive instead of making you feel like no one's there leaving you hanging out to dry. So <laughs> there, uh, it's another really great method um, that, that is very helpful in that regard. Um, and then most hospitals, if you're doing a hospital birth, how many people here are planning to do a hospital birth? As I figured. All right, so most of the time you're, all, you're gonna have to go to a class in the hospital where they're gonna teach you um, what to expect, what their expectations of you are, what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do, all those good things. So. Most of you will be taking one of those classes if you haven't already. So it's just different ways to learn what's happening around the birthing process. So the other thing that I want to talk about is not on the slide. Um, even if you're having a hospital birth, uh, I would encourage all of you to sit down and maybe read through some birthing plans that are online. Um, there's a lot of decisions you have to make around the time a baby is born. Um, what you want to have happen, what you want the baby to have, all of these different things. So going into it with your eyes wide open and knowing exactly what you want before you actually, the water breaks and it's, it's real, <laughs> um, is a really, really good idea. So even if you don't take it with you for your labor, but just knowing what you want when you walk into the hospital or wherever you're birthing your children is a really, really good idea. So I would encourage you all to do that. But on that note too, like I had to really talk to my husband about what I was looking for. Because when you're in the middle of it, you just don't see anything. So making sure that you, your significant other knows what your plans are and what you are looking for in your birth is awesome too. Okay, so that being said, we are chiropractors. You're probably like wondering like, why are they even talking about this? So, and we kind of wanted to really, men are a little different than women in their health care choices. And we know that after practicing for 20 years. Um, women are the ones that are the proactive, wonderful, like let's do this. And men are like dragged and kicking and screaming. If I'm in so much pain, I'm gonna crawl into the office and fix you in one visit kind of guys. And I don't know, if, not you guys, right? None of you, none of you. Okay, so you wanna know why we're even talking about this. You probably haven't even thought about chiropractic for yourself, your children, your spouses, your significant others. Chiropractic is a lot different than most people think and the things that we do as chiropractors is very different. So we wanna talk about the support of the pregnancy and the support of the baby with what we do, okay? So chiropractic is non-invasive, it's drug-free, it's super gentle, super safe, so we also will talk about the technique we do, which is very, very different than most people think. Um, our job as chiropractors is to work with the nervous system. Okay. <laughs> it's just like, ah! And the nervous system, who knows what the nervous system does here? Anybody, anybody? It controls everything. It controls every system, every organ. Your brain talks through the nervous system to your body. So most people don't think about the nervous system the way we do because you don't really see it. You take better care of your teeth because you can see your teeth than you do of your spine. And it's the most important thing when you're pregnant, your posture, your body, your nervous system, your whole spine is the most important thing that, to protect the baby too. So let's, one of the things that we're talking about is the signs that why, you know, people are like, well, why should I even, even see a chiropractor? So, Think about your body right now. This is, I'm sticking to the women, not to the beer bellies, okay? Think about your body. Does a baby sit on one side versus the other? Is your baby sitting super high or super low? Is the baby always kicking on one side versus the other? 
I hear it all the time where the baby's got a foot up in my rib and it's, I, it, the baby's always here, always here, always here. Does that sound like anybody here? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yep, that's me. Okay. So these are the kind of things that our job is to prevent. So what is breach presentation? Most people know what breach presentation is, right? Like, yeah. Babies should be head down. That's, that's how a delivery should be. Breach is when the baby's gonna be up high. The baby's head is up and it's gonna come through feet down, which is not the optimal presentation that you want for your baby. Um, so inner uterine constraint means just what I talked about, it. the baby's always on one side. If you think about it, if, it's, if you're always really tight on one side and the baby doesn't have enough room, the baby's gonna get away from that side, okay? Or you, when you lay down, here's another thing. If you lay down, the baby always kind of stays on one side versus the other or always kicks to one side. Does that sound like anybody? Because I know I had a rib here and a foot for like six months where I would put my drink, not my drink drink, but my water glass with ice and I would put it so she would bring her foot down underneath my rib so I could breathe. Okay. Um, so if your baby is always staying in one position, you want your abdomen to be free flowing. You want to be smooth. You want the baby to be able to have as much room as possible. More room, more growth. Um, and then the swelling in extremities. Who has the swelling in the extremities? Olivia, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh yeah. I, I hear what you're laying down, sister. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So most of us, especially the men, you kind of just, the lady parts, you know a few, you don't know all of them, right? <laughs> I'm speaking to the guys here. Um, so this talks about the pelvis. Where's my pelvis? Okay. Your baby has to be born through here. This is a space. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> so, most people don't think about it. This is one solid bone. This is your hip bone. This is your, where your, your femur head's in. This is your pubic bone. This is where you sit on. It's all one bone. These two bones are the most important bones with pregnancy because they do so much. You want to walk, you want to sit, you want to lay down comfortably. These two bones are the most important bones, okay? And that doesn't look like it's gonna fit a baby's head. Not my baby's head, I can tell you. So we all know the pregnancy waddle, right? You get it, it's part of, part of what we have to go through. And what the pregnancy waddle is, is basically the bones opening up, your pubic symphysis has to soften, so everything has to open up. In a perfect world, everything opens up even. So the baby can just come down nice and easy. Your tailbone, right here, has to open. So think about your tailbone. Most people don't, but we tend to overthink it. Every time you walk, your tailbone does a figure eight. Every time you sit, tailbone goes in. Every time you stand, tailbone goes out. So that's the normal tailbone position. So you want that to be open and moving as free as possible. Because everybody wants a really nice, easy delivery, right? Nice and easy. I don't want to hear like 24 hours of pushing and 18 hours of labor, nice and easy. So this is our main focus. And this is, we're gonna teach you some things to keep this area as flexible and as free as it can possibly be. Okay, so that's my little anatomy. All right, so how many of you ever heard of the Webster technique? Just one person in the game. Okay, so Webster, um, Dr. Webster created a technique, and it's not just for pregnant women, but originally that's what he founded it for. Um, by getting adjustments, um, it adjusts, it works on your round ligaments, which are that ligament right there. You have one on each side. Um, it connects from your uterus down to your pubic symphysis area, so down into the front. Um, so anytime we have any torsion in that area, it causes the uterus with the baby in it to sit in a weird way, which like Dr. Taylor was saying, can cause the baby to get stuck on one side or stay on one side or not flip from a breech presentation to head down or even stay in like a transverse lie or something that's not optimal, obviously, for the baby to be born. So part of what we do as chiropractors is analyze your pelvis um, to see what's happening, if things are moving appropriately, 
check the round ligaments to see if they're doing their job as well. And using the Webster technique, be able to clear those things out so that the baby is able to sit more comfortably, go head down if necessary. What most people remember this as is like the breech baby turning technique. That's mostly what people hear. That's not really what it is, but by allowing the, the uterus to move freely, it's the baby's allowed to move a lot easier and get to where it needs to be for your delivery. So that is what Webster is. Um, I am going to ask, do we have a pregnant mom out there who would like to come up here and I can borrow them for just a minute? It's super easy, I promise. Oh, sure. <laughs> like anybody who wants to come. So this is this next thing I'm going to talk about is what I'm calling a take-home tip. So uh, most people, when they're pregnant, try to like keep their their butt tucked in, keep the belly, like do all kinds of weird things with their body. So we're gonna walk through some stuff here. All right. Where's the easiest place? Can you guys see her if she's here? Christina. Christina. This is Christina. Everyone say hi. Hello. <laughs> say thank you. I didn't. You didn't have to come up because she did. Okay. So what we see most of the time, I'm gonna have you just stay sideways, just like that. Perfect. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm trying to multitask here. It's not working. So most of the time, what we see is we have moms who are not allowing their belly to drop in the front which is causing them to use their low back a lot more than they should. So by facet loading, which is what I'm gonna teach her how to do, it's gonna help take a lot of the stress and strain off the low back. So what I want you to do is almost just let this lower part of your belly, like almost drop it like you're, drop it like it's hot, drop it like it's hot. And I want you to keep your upper body really up. So you really wanna have a nice arch here, okay? That's what you really wanna feel for. So you should really have a nice arch when you're standing. Um, you should really feel like this area is actually dropping down. So spread your feet a little bit wider for me. When you're pregnant, it's really smart not to stand with your feet super close together. It's really easy to fall down that way, especially when your belly gets a little bigger. When are you doing? November 28th. Yes. Remember babies. All right, so those are the biggest things. The other one, standing sometimes is not so bad, but really the biggest thing with standing is you wanna make sure that you're not tucking your butt muscles in. So it's not, you don't wanna like contract and try to roll your pelvis forward. You really almost wanna stick your butt out, okay? okay. I know, that's not what everyone ever tells you. <laughs> the other really important thing is seated. So I'm gonna have you sit. So when you're sitting, most people have a tendency to curl their back up again. It's that same kind of motion where you're pulling things down and in. Instead of doing that, the really best thing you can do is sit towards the edge of the chair when you're pregnant, spread your knees a little bit wide, and, and let the belly hang in between your legs. That's gonna allow that facet loading again. A lot of us have jobs where we sit a lot, and sitting to the back of the chair with your back and your pelvis rounded is actually causing a lot of strain, especially during your pregnancy. So the goal really for you is just always, you wanna have a really nice curve in your low back and let the baby almost hang between your legs. So does that feel different than you normally would sit? I actually am feeling it. It's more, more comfortable. comfortable. Like, okay. Especially on the ball. Okay, yeah. Ball is another really good tool to use, so if you don't have one of those big exercise balls, get one. Your wife will thank you, your significant other will thank you. Just do it, because it's the best thing. Rocking on the ball, making figure eights, really, really good preparation for birthing. That's why a lot of places now actually have them in their birthing suites. So those are the biggest things for, as far as take home, really focus on allowing the back to take the, the facet joints, which are what is in your spine, really allowing them to take most of the force <laughs> instead of using the muscles to, to hold yourself up. So thank you so much. Oh, yeah, you can okay. do that too. All right, so one more move. Okay. okay, so this is for all you dads out there. If your, your significant other already loves you, right? This will let, make her love you even more, if it's possible. So this is gonna help with the strain of the sacrum and really help with like calming the, the whole body down. So what I'm gonna have her do is normally what I would do is this would be against the wall because you want to, as a dad, you or as a guy, you want to push, and you don't want to push. So you actually want to find the dimples of the sacrum. You're going to take your hand, and you're going to point your fingers down, okay? So it's a down pointing fingers, and you just basically get on the tailbone, 
and I can guide you like nice and straight, and you're just gonna get in, just put some pressure on the tailbone. Yeah, exactly. You're actually, she's a little locked up on the left side or on the right side, but it's gonna take some of the pressure off the sacrum and just nice stretch. This is by far the best thing you can do just to, just to help going into the delivery. It's just gonna help that pressure sit right there. You don't wanna push forward because it's gonna cause the whole posture. You just wanna do a nice stretch. Keep your fingers straight down, nice and stretched. You can do this every day for five minutes and a massage for an hour would be awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. An easy place to do that, just as a thought, is at the kitchen counter, because she can like rest her arms on the counter, yeah. so you don't feel like you're pushing her over. If anybody wants that demonstrated later, I can show you, because it's one of those things that I just begged my husband, other than rubbing my feet too, I'll admit that one, just like rub my feet, but that just helps open everything up and keep the baby in a really good position. So, okay. okay. So let's kind of dive into what causes some issues with pregnancy. So who had a really stressful time getting pregnant? It happens. It's really, so stress by far is what we're living in this world of, we're living in a world of stress. And when we start with a stressful pregnancy, it leads into a stressful, stressful just life. So we wanna kind of dive into, your baby can feel everything. So your baby is always feeling, sensing what is going on in the mom's body, okay? So stress, there's three types of stress and there's three causes of stress. And we talk about them as the three T's in our practice. So the first T, trauma. So that's usually the biggest one that people remember. Slips and falls, car accidents, the big things. Who, who else has children here? Okay. Have you ever watched them learn how to walk and saw them on the playground? How many times have they fallen? Over and over and over, repetitive. So trauma is the big one that most people remember. And that's stressful. It's stressful on your pregnancy. It's stressful on your body. Second T, T is thoughts, which is emotional stress. We, as women, are living in a very stressful world, which we're constantly bombarded with emotions of, how am I going to be the best mom I can ever be? What am I going to do with my baby? What, can I be this? Can I do this? And like, we, like, I know some of your brains, because I was there. And I know what you think, because it's like, you're always worried. You're always hearing new things, and you kind of get down that rabbit hole, like, you know, should I feed my baby organic? Should I do this? Should I do that? And you just kind of start worrying and worrying and worrying. And you, you know, you're hearing me, right? Because it's, as a mom, before you become a parent, the world is so stressful. And then, believe me, once you have a baby, everything is even that much more stressful. Okay, so the emotional stress. But your baby is feeling that. There's a lot of hormones that are released. Your baby's feeling that too. When you're happy, the baby's feeling that. It's great. Okay, third T is toxins. And most people don't think about this the way we do, but toxins is not only what you eat, but what you don't eat. It's what you put on your skin. It's what you're using. So this study um, fascinated me. So this study was done in 2005. So imagine this is over 10 years ago and it's on umbilical cord blood. So the baby's not been born yet. Okay, so 287 chemicals were detected in umbilical cord blood when they did the testing. 287 chemicals. 180 were known to cause cancer. Now let that sit. Because you think like, well, my baby's in my uterus and everything's great. This was like the scariest study I've ever seen. Because this is 10 years ago, and the world's not got, gotten less toxic, right? We have so many more things that are in our environment, so many more things that we put on our bodies, so many more things that we eat and come in contact with, that 287 chemicals in the umbilical cord blood. So as a mom, that just kind of like made me throw up in my mouth. So we just kind of want you to open your eyes to things of thinking about the three T's and what you can do to help protect your baby, okay? So. Okay, so some take-home scripts on combating stress. 
number one thing when you're pregnant is stay hydrated. You know, like you, we can't stress enough how much hydration when you're pregnant is the key to pretty much everything. The more water you drink, the better you are. And you obviously can drink beer later, but not now, but lots and lots of water. Um, ask for help. As a business owner, I was used to never asking for help. Never, because I just did it. I did it all myself, I could do it, I could do it, I could do it. And the first pregnancy, my husband finally looked at me and he's like, you know, you do have a pregnancy card. And I was like, pregnancy card, what's that? He's like, you can play your pregnancy card at any time. Like, any time you want to play it, I will do it. And I was like, okay, go give me some chips and some <laughs> So, but it took me a while as a, as a woman to go, wow, I can actually ha ask for help. So look around you, look at your family, look at your friends. They are willing to help you out. After my second pregnancy, after my second daughter was born, I was tired. You know, when you have a, a toddler and you have a baby, and my mom said, what can I do? And I'm like, decorate my Christmas tree. That's all I wanted. She was born November 26th, and I just needed a Christmas tree up. And so my cousin came over, my mom came over, and they decorated my Christmas tree, and it was glorious. And it was beautiful, and it made me so happy. So asking for help. Ask your partner for help. Ask your family for help. Listen to, what, what can you do? Clean my house. Can I help? Yep, come over and cook me dinner. <laughs> if you have two kids, yep, I'm gonna go take a nap. Please listen and ask for help. Prenatal yoga is amazing. If you, know, if you don't know enough about that, we can, we can give you resources for that. And my last, my favorite one, ignore everyone's advice. Everyone. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone has advice. As soon as they find out you're pregnant, they're like, oh, hey, right? You shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be drinking that. You shouldn't be eating that. Everyone has an opinion. And don't ever tell your children, like, what you're going to name your baby. Don't ever tell anybody. Keep it to yourselves. My oldest daughter's name is Brick. Yeah, Brick. B-R-I-C, Brick. Imagine what people used to say to me. They could never say, oh, I knew a kid named Brick. That, at least I didn't have that. But you, you know, people have an opinion all the time. So the number one way to stop stress is just say, I'll take that under consideration. Thank you. It, with a smile. Yeah, I'll take that under consideration. Thank you. And just walk away. But that would be my number one way to avoid stress. So. Okay. I'm still talking. Oh, hello. Oh, this is my favorite talk, thing to talk about, chiropractic. So, I love chiropractic. I love being a chiropractor. I love adjusting pregnant mamas. I love adjusting babies. So, this is one of the things, this is really why we're here, because we want, most people don't think about chiropractic for you, other than like, everybody knows it's for back pain, right? Everyone knows it might be for headaches or neck pain. Chiropractic is so much more, okay? So these are the benefits of chiropractic care for the mom. And there's a lot. We got a lot of benefits for you. Okay. But the number one thing that we hear in our practice, and you can read them, shorter, easier delivery. On the average, three hours off your delivery time. That's the number one thing we hear in our practice. Like, I had the most amazing delivery. Who wants three hours off their delivery time? Mm -hmm. Yep. Easy delivery, comfortable pregnancies. I felt so good when I was pregnant. I had more, I have more energy. I have, like I can actually run after my baby and do all these things and I just feel good. Like, don't you want that? I want that, I want that all the time. So, what else is up there? Uh, okay, greater production of breast milk. You don't think about the nerves that go to your body the way we do. But if you're not producing enough breast milk, there's actually places that we can adjust to help it. Because we're helping your circulation, we're helping your blood flow, we're helping your body do what it's made to do. Also, we have two boobs for a reason. Yep, I said them, boobies, two, one and two. So their baby should go to both equally. And then our job is to empower our moms, to make you more comfortable in your skin, make you more confident in knowing your your birth choices, making you feel good. That's our job. 
So the other benefit is the baby in utero. You don't think about, we just talked about the baby feeling everything and understanding all that stress, but we're increasing circulation, we're increasing blood flow, we're increasing the body's ability to be in the right position. The placenta, the placenta has more flow. We're decreasing stress hormones to the baby. So that's awesome. That's what we all want, right? Okay, so we talked about those three T's. We're gonna dive into this. What do you think the biggest trauma is? In life, overall, in general, biggest trauma. Having a baby's really big, right up there. Anybody else? Death. Death is the biggest trauma. <laughs> How about? It's actually birth. Okay, remember that little hole that the baby had to come out of? So let's demonstrate. <laughs> I mean, this is Drake. This is Drake. And yes, he looks real, doesn't he? Isn't it crazy? In a really creepy way, this is Drake. This is my daughter's baby. I love Drake. We put him through so much, though. I, oh, sorry, Drake. Okay, so this is your beautiful bouncing baby. Anybody who has blue, this is a baby boy. Drake's a boy. Okay, so Drake has to go through this pelvic outlet. Head down, right? Get the, get the picture? Okay. <laughs> so not to scare you at all, not to freak you out, because it is gonna happen, it's coming in the next two to nine months, right? And most people think like, oh, I'm just gonna have a C-section, everything will be great, right? C-sections actually put way more pressure on the baby's neck than a natural delivery does. Okay, so, baby's born, head down, right, and comes out. Has anybody ever, I mean, I know you have to watch birth videos, right? Did they ever force you guys to do that? I, I know I did, because I'm fascinated with it, and it makes me really squeamish. So, if you Google the birth of a baby, so whether it's a natural delivery or a C-section, the number one thing they're doing is pulling on the head because they have to deliver it, right? It has, the baby has to come out. I've watched deliveries where the baby's being pulled, put up on the table, here. Okay, that's not good, right? What's the very first thing you do after a baby's born? What do you do when you hand the baby to someone? What do you say? Hold the head, watch the neck, oh, be careful. But you don't know what the doctor just did to the baby, right? It's kind of scary. So in our practice, we see, this is a kind of an interesting statistic. We see a lot of right-sided neck things. Any clue why we would see a lot of right-sided neck things in newborn babies? Right-handed doctors. Right doctors, you got it. Who said that? You're a rock star over there. Right-handed doctors. So if you're right-handed, that's your hand that you're going to hold the baby with. Your left hand is just the guy. So when we are seeing all these right-sided injuries with the neck, it's because of the right-sided doctors, right-handed doctors. It's kind of fascinating. See? Poor Drake. Just, he just, I love him so much. He needs an adjustment. <laughs> so we don't want to scare you at all, but this is one of the things, our job as pediatric chiropractors and pregnancy chiropractors is to prevent a lot of things down the road. Because we hear a lot of times patients will come in and say, you know what, I've had migraines since I've been eight. I've had back pain since I can remember. I have all these issues and it stems from childhood. When we are going through our exams with our, like our kiddos, we hear a lot that it's really tough deliveries which stem will actually stressful pregnancies that end up with really tough deliveries, which end up with lots of stress on the babies. So our job is to educate you so we don't have these things. Okay. So a few of the interesting things about what we do as pediatric chiropractors is how many of you have seen babies in helmets? Because they have a flat spot or things that aren't right where they should be. Um, we both are educated in a way that we actually, are actually able to adjust the cranial bones. Um, it allows the baby's head to come back to where it should be without having to do a bolt. Wearing a helmet, worrying about, you know, your little boy with his head shaved looking all funny, right? Nobody wants that for their kid because we are a very, um, what is the one that? 
<laughs> cruel, cruel, that's a good word. We're very cruel. So those are things that we can do. A lot of times we also see kids coming in with things like torticollis right after they're born or really bad colic. So those are other things that by getting adjusted from the very beginning, we stop that stuff from happening. And who wants a baby that's colicky? No mom that wants to get any sleep. Who wants to not be able to put their baby down on their back because the baby doesn't like how it feels on their head. So you have to carry them all the time. No mom wants that, no dad wants that, no anyone wants that really. So these are some of the things that we can stop um, from happening along the way. There's also a study in your folder that talks about, um, they did a study to see if there was issues with the neck function right after birth. And 99 out of 100 normal healthy births had a problem in the upper cervical spine right after birth. So that's in your paperwork there. And that's why we want to check babies right after they're born because get rid of problems then, stop problems from turning into bigger things like ear infections and asthma and allergies and all of the things that nobody wants to have to deal with. So that's that. So what makes us different? Like Dr. Saylor said, we're both pediatric chiropractors. We both have extra education in pediatrics and pregnancy. Not that we don't like to take care of dads or men or whatever, people that don't have kids. You guys are not as fun. I'm sorry. I like the kids. <laughs> she said it, not me. Um, so we love taking care of kids. Um, we both have, like I said, quite a bit of extra education, and we have to get continuing education in specifically that um, every, every year. So. What else makes us different? We use a low force technique or a number of low force techniques to allow things to move easily without making you feel uncomfortable. We also use technology. We don't take x-rays, obviously. We don't take x-rays of a pregnant lady anyway. But we're able to use the technology that we have to analyze the nervous system to see how it's functioning. Um, it lets us know where there's areas of tension. It lets us know how your body's adapting to stress. All of those different things are really important because like she said, your nervous system controls every single thing you can think about that happens in your body. So that's another really great thing we do. Um, our office is very cool, very friendly. We have two jungle rooms. Kids cry when they leave because they're sad that they have to go, not because they got it. <laughs> we have to pick them out of the rooms. We actually had to take the one jungle room we had and make it into two because we had so many kids that were like, I don't want to leave. So, that, our office also offers two therapists that do prenatal massage, which is, if you're not having those, it would be really great for you. It's wonderful for your body, wonderful for stress, um, but it's really important to see someone who actually knows what they're doing, because there are places in your body that you should not touch when you're pregnant because it can cause miscarriage. So, that being said, now it's your turn. Okay, I totally missed one part, because I wanted to talk to the dads about the pelvis. Um, so, everybody, who plays basketball here? Like you guys know what the basketball is, right? So, basketball hoop should be nice and round, right? So, one of the things we talked about is delivery and how chiropractic can help. So, I wanted to just kind of put this in your brain. You have a basketball hoop. What if the basketball hoop was not round? What if it looked like this? Right? Or misshapen? Would it be as easy to make a basket? Anyone? Probably not. Probably have like bounce off and you'd be like, okay, guess what? I'm not scoring anything. That's exactly what the pelvis should be like. The pelvis should be as smooth and as round as possible for easier, safer delivery. Okay, so that's just, I want, because guys a lot of times don't really think about all the other stuff. So I kind of wanted to put that in your head. So think about the pelvis should be a nice round basketball hoop. And the baby should be able to just nice and easily be born. Okay. Okay, so what is the next step? So if any of this piques your interest, if you're like, hmm, I wonder if I should get checked, there is a coupon in here for a really good offer. It's $100 off your initial exam, and this goes for all of you. So it's a really good time. We highly, highly encourage you to get checked, obviously, because we believe in what we do. And when we talked about, when she was talking about the low, low force techniques, a lot of dads are like, mm, I'm not sure, you're gonna crack my crack me, right? That's what, when you say chiropractic, what do you think? Cracking, right? Snapping, popping, she's gonna twist me like a pretzel, get me in there and just jam me. That is not what we do. Most of our adjustings are done, adjustments are done in a standing position, super, super gentle. It uses a tool that gently taps you. 
it usually feels really, really good, and you just like totally. I have a couple patients here. Who's my patients here? Who wants to raise their hands? All right, awesome. So the technique we do is so gentle that most people are just like, it feels so good. So that whole scary, like chiropractic is scary. It is not scary at all in our practice and what we do. So we do have an amazing offer for you. So we would highly encourage you to call our office or we can call you. Um, but we just wanted to, hopefully this presentation empowered you, informed you on some different options, give you some different ideas. We have some great gifts that we're gonna do. We're gonna call up our wonderful sponsors of the events. So Renee, do you wanna come up? We're gonna actually, wait, Melissa's gonna, everybody pull out your registration cards, your forms. Oh, yeah. We'll give you a couple minutes to fill those out. So the registration form, you fill that out, that's going to be used for your raffle ticket. Okay. Oh, Melissa's going to come up and share what you're filling out your registration form. <laughs> this, what I'm going to say, was not rehearsed. This was like on the spot when I got here. So I actually have two kids that are older now, in their 20s, but... My, both my pregnancies, I was under the care of a chiropractor the entire pregnancy. I wish Dr. Saylor and Dr. Ashley were around when I was pregnant because their system is so gentle from what I went through with chiropractic, but I did go regularly. My first born was five days early. I actually almost delivered in the car I went in and I was the one that said, knock me out, give me drugs, I want everything. I had no epidural. He was crowning upon getting to the hospital. And they're like, this is your first delivery? Three pushes and he was out. And I had girlfriends that were in labor for 12 to 24 hours. My second child, chiropractic care the whole time, 30 minutes in labor, that was it out the door boom and that's how and that's what chiropractic does for you but upon actually giving birth i had my kids adjusted so they were sleeping through the night there was no colic any onset of ear infections adjustment no ear infections if your baby is you think is getting sick get them adjusted and you will have the healthiest babies ever and i can't say enough good things about these two ladies Everybody still fill out the registration. Raise your hand if you're done with your registration. These be picked up. So we have a couple of really good gifts for you too for just coming as a thank you. We really appreciate it. Everybody. I'm Renee Rodriguez. I'm the one that's been photographing the event tonight. And in full disclosure, I should say I am a patient of Dr. Ashley and Dr. Saylor as well. Um, and before I started coming to them, I was freaked out about chiropractors. I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want my bones to all cracked and contorted weird like they were saying. And the te technique that they use is so gentle and different. And like she said, you literally stand and they come from behind your back and they tap you really hard with a, it almost looks like a gun. Well, not hard, but you know, it's soft, it doesn't hurt. And the first time I was like, there's no way this is gonna work. There's no way, it definitely did. Um, I've been going now there for almost two years. I have a four-year-old son now and after I gave birth, I just felt like my body just never went back to normal. And after seeing both of them, it's the best I felt in a really long time. So I highly recommend them. But why I'm up here, um, so I've donated a uh, gift certificate for a free maternity photo session tonight. It's worth $200. It's a one-hour session. It includes 25 digital images that you get to keep as the customer. Um, so after this session, I'll upload them to my website, and you'll have a password-protected gallery where you can download the photos. Um, and that is 
Dr. Saylor, Dr. Ashley's gift to all of you guys for coming. I also have a display, a window display back there with some of my work. I also have a event package for $300 for two hours, which you could use for a baby shower, a communion, christening, baptism, first birthday party. Um, I have a website, so please feel free to check me out. And if you are in the market for maternity um, session, I would love to talk to you more and uh, work with you. Are you guys ready to pull? Or everyone's got their forms turned in. Okay, the winner is Jessica Urban. Urban? Jessica? Congratulations. I will talk to you more a little bit after, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Hey, congratulations, Jessica. Jenny. I am a mom of a 16 month old boy. I live out in Macomb and I actually recommend or represent, I also recommend them too. <laughs> Inspired Start. We are a baby food company. We are based out of Boston and we just expanded to the Midwest area and started selling at Fresh Time. You can also find us on Amazon. And what we're about is basically helping parents introduce some of the more common food allergens into babies' diets. So recommendations used to be hold off until um, at least a year introducing peanuts, and now we're finding that we should be introducing these foods right as you introduce solids around six months of age. So what we did is we started a baby food company, and we basically pair a common um, food allergen with an organic fruit puree. So I actually have some samples in the back if you'd like to stop by after, and then what we'd like to do is donate um, a pack one and pack two, so they're all eight of our recipes, um, to a future mama, um, to be able to have those when you're ready to start solids in the next couple months, so, or future months. So yeah, um, again, we are starting a stall at Fresh Time, and we'll be in more groceries soon, but yeah, just a cool concept, and you're welcome to come taste. We have apple and peanuts, and pear and egg back there, and I have some more information to um, as well. So thanks, and thanks for having us. Oh yes, we even have a banana and shrimp one. So <laughs> I know, sounds real delicious, right? <laughs> but hey, uh, my son loves it. Their mama and baby tested. You know, the other palettes are definitely more, you know, exploratory than ours. So, um, all right, I will draw a winner. This is a lot of pressure. <laughs> Drum roll. Okay. And the winner is um, Shakira Canty. And sorry if I missed it. Yay! Um, if you want to see me in the back, I'll get your information, then I'll send it to you directly. So we'll have a fresh pack for you. Okay? You're welcome. This is a surprise guest, so I'm excited. Hi, I'm Mandy. I am a hypnobirthing practitioner, and I'm a certified lactation counselor as well, and a doula. Um, and I just wanted to extend to you guys an offer of any of my services for 10% off if you just mentioned that you were here tonight. Um, I do group and private hypnobirthing classes, so if the group classes that I offer don't work for you, we can set up private classes and meet whenever it works for you. So um, I have some cards and brochures if you guys want to grab some and just mention to me if you email or call that you were here. and. Um, I'd like to extend the discount to you. Thank you. And this is Oliver. <laughs> he um, is also a chiropractor baby. He was born um, and had some trauma to his neck, so he was always like this, just like she was talking about. Um, and when I laid him down, he was uncomfortable. He would be laying in his bed like this all the time. So we took him to get some chiropractic care and he doesn't do that anymore. He's a much happier baby and it worked really well for him. So I recommend it for babies too. <laughs> well, thank you. All right, so the last thing we have is a one hour prenatal massage. We have amazing, amazing massage therapists in our office. So let's see, okay. 
All right, drum roll. Let's see. Stephanie Holichuk. Yay, Stephanie! Awesome, congratulations everybody. So we'll stick around if you have any questions. We really appreciate you guys coming. This was our very first Baby Bumps event. So we just, you know, any feedback, please let us know. So talk to the vendors, um, stay, have a cocktail on us. So we hope you appreciate it. And thank you dads for being here. We really appreciate you. As, as a mom, I really appreciate you too. So thank you, have a good night everybody.